Is from the book of John, the 21st chapter, verses 1 through 14, and the subject is friends, food, fellowship. And the subject of our lesson reminds us of the days when we used to have quality meat here. We had friends from neighboring churches, and there was plenty of food and great fellowship. As we begin our lesson, it says, uh, after this, and after these things, and so forth, so after this, Jesus appeared again to the disciples at the Tiberius Sea, which is the Sea of Galilee. And this is how, and this is how it happened. But Simon Peter Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. And Simon Peter said, you know, Peter was always the one to lead. He was kind of a leader, and he many times he just say things without thinking about it. And but he seemed to be the spokesperson for the disciples. And Peter said, "I'm going fishing," and the other said, "Well, the rest of them said, we're going with you. You know, we ain't got nothing else to do." They went out and got into the boat, and but all night and all they fished and caught nothing. But when the sun come up, Jesus was standing on the shore. But the disciples didn't recognize him at first. Jesus called out to them, y'all catch anything? Children, did you get anything? You got any meat? Any fish? They said, no. And then he said to them, said, well, throw your net on the right side of the boat, and you'll get plenty of them. They did. And they were not able to go and haul in all that they had because there were so many fish. Mm -hmm. Then his disciple, whom Jesus loved, and said to Peter, said, you know, it's the Lord. Peter said, huh? They said, it's the Lord. When Peter heard that, he took off. He hurried up, got his clothes on, and he jumped in the water to swim. He wanted to go and meet Jesus. And it said the, the rest of the disciples came in the boat dragging the net with all the fish in it. They would say they were only about 100 yards from the shore. But they had so much fish, they had to call in some of the other boats to come help them. And when they got out of the boat, they saw a fire with fish laid on it. And also bread. Like, what's going on? Then Jesus told him to bring some of the fish you just caught. Simon Peter hauled it over there. And they said that it was about 153 fish. And, and, 
and said the net was not broken. Or torn. And then uh, the disciples said, come and have, uh, Jesus told the disciples, said, come on, have some breakfast. I'm cooking. Come on, have some breakfast. And none of the disciples asked who he was. By that time, they knew who he was. And Jesus served them breakfast of fish and bread. And this was the third time it said that Jesus appeared to his disciples since he had risen, had, had risen from the dead. <clears throat> now, when you look at this, and you see just how um, the crew were restless. You know, they had, uh, <clears throat> they were frustrated with the way that things were going. Uh, Jesus had reappeared to them on two occasions. But they had no idea when he was going to show up again because Jesus would just show up. And as soon as he showed up, the people died. It kept them so they didn't know when he was going to show up, if he going to show up. They had no idea when he would show up again. And, 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 that, meant, and, and that meant that uh, <clears throat> they stayed in limbo. They, was, they, were, they were discouraged. And they were already discouraged and everything and the crucifixion just pushed them almost over the edge because they were saying you know they had hope when they had hope Christ was going to be the one that was going to deliver them from the Roman oppression they had all kind of hope but when he got crucified they thought well that's the end of it I reckon we'll be in this predicament the rest of our life but they, didn't, they hadn't thought before as the resurrection. And he said, <clears throat> and, and, and see, the, the Lord had a plan for the group. And, and see, but, uh, but he had not been, you know, he had not shared it with them. So they were anxiously awaiting the next step. Like, what's going to be next? They know Christ had risen. And he had appeared to them already two times. And they didn't know when he was going to come again. And, and nobody, you know, nobody could tell him anything, of course. <clears throat> and, you know, Peter seemed to be the, the leader of the group, as I said. And when he said he was going fishing, they figured they didn't have nothing else to do. So they reluctantly followed Peter fishing. But when they said, uh, after they had been there all night long, see, those, they were the experienced fishermen. And they fished at night because... During the day, the fish wouldn't come out because of the heat. But said they'll be way down in the depths of the sea. But at night, they come out, and that's when they get the food. So <clears throat> they had fish all that night, but they hadn't caught anything. And then Jesus come along and tell them, throw, throw out your net on the right side. Like, hey, this is daytime. The fish don't even come out at daytime. And you tell us to cast our net. We already been out here all night long. We ain't caught nothing. Because over in Luke, Luke the fifth chapter, and the fifth verse, I believe, he said, when he said that, he said, uh, Peter said, well, Master, we, we have fished all night. We've been out here all night and caught nothing. But nevertheless, if you said so, we'll throw out our net on the right side. But see, it seems so unreal to them because they said, now, this man, he's not a seasoned fisherman like we are. But here he is telling us to throw out a net out on the other side. So he, and he told them, just cash your net on the right side. When he did, like I said, they brought in all those fish. And it says 153. I don't know what the, the meaning really of that, except it could be that one, ver one version say it was the different types of fish. Another version said it showed the abundance of God. But nevertheless, they had all these fish. And, and you see, and then but when daybreak comes and, and they saw this familiar sight appear, it was Jesus. He had a habit of showing up at the right time in the right way. After his resurrection appeared, they never knew when he was going to show up. And so. <clears throat> The, the disciples, when they saw, realized it was Jesus, boy, were they happy. And you know, we are the same way. The resurrection is, has done wonders for us too. If there had not been any resurrection, then all of our preaching, all of our teaching, 
all of them trying to live like we just did in vain. And see, without Jesus, the disciples, they were a group of misfits that had failed to realize their holy purpose. The crucifixion left them even more confused, but his resurrection changed all that. He gave them new hope and, and, and the will to fulfill the purpose for which they had been called. See, they felt like until Jesus started appearing to them, they were just lost. They just wandered kind of aimlessly, not knowing which way to go, what to do. But he said, uh, <clears throat> and, 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 you know, at, at, at first, they didn't know it was the Lord when they saw this figure. <clears throat> that figure appeared to them in the sea, but the Lord spoke out and called to them and asked, you called anything? And they said, no. And he said, well, throw your net on the right side. And see, like I said, they couldn't imagine, why Jesus, why, why would this man want to throw our net out? He done told them what had happened. <clears throat> but they did as they were told. And, and they had to have help to the disciples whom Jesus loved told Peter, said, uh, it's the Lord. And with that, Peter, Peter just, some versions say he was naked. Some versions say he hurried up and put on his clothes uh, and jumped in the sea. He wanted to go to meet Jesus. Peter did love the Lord. <clears throat> the other disciples came by boat, pulling along the net full of fish. And then, you know, when Jesus told them to bring some fish, some of the fish they just caught, he said, breakfast ready, come on. Breakfast on me. And he served them. The disciples away was found to be dead in the street. They were operating on their own limited, <clears throat> operating on their own, uh, excuse me, their own limited insight. And you know, those experienced fishermen, you would have thought they would have tried different ways, like if they had, maybe they hadn't had this happen before. Maybe they had never fished all night and not caught anything. But you would think they would know all kinds of things and ways. But it only goes to show you our level is nothing like God's level. Because they had... Um, you would have thought they would have been experienced enough. They said, well, let's try this. Let's try that. Wonder why they're not biting tonight or something like that. But they did. But when God got a plan and he's not ready for you to find it out, you don't know. You only know what God allows you to know. <clears throat> you can't get above him. And, and that, that large catch of fish, you know, when, when they obeyed Jesus, See, when, when they followed the direction of Jesus and recasted their net, they came up with the largest catch they had ever had. And the large catch of fish of Jesus' direction and, and confirming it at Jesus' correction, identified him as the giver of abundant gifts. And as, as, and as one who should be glorified as God. See, it pays to obey Jesus. After all, he had examined the situation, and he recommended a fix. But the recommendation must be followed for the payoff to become real. He, he, he intervenes in our life. He gives us, he, try to, he guides us, but if we don't listen to him, and if we've already decided which way we're going to go, See, sometimes we have our agenda and we say we got it all down and either in our mind or on paper or something aside of what we want to do. And but when it may not be what God wants, but we have this agenda, we'll present this list to God. So guess what I want? And this, that, and the other. But you never stop to ask, Lord, say, this is what I want, but what do you want me to have? Because you can see way down the road. And way around the curve. So what do you want me to do? And as so Jesus appears to the disciples, shows that he's the source of life. The fact that he prepared the meal shows the greatness of his provision. And, and 
the lesson show also show that Jesus would come at a time when the least expected. He came to the disciples when they least expected and fulfilled their hope. And he would come to uh, come to our rescue. Sometimes when we least expect it. Sometimes we prayed about something for a long time. Something or somebody. We just don't seem to see it change. But Jesus hears you. Jesus knows that. He knows when to show up. He knows just what to do. And, and uh, you know, if Jesus' resurrection gave new hope to the disciples, and it does the same for us. You know, our sins, our sickness, our problems, our cares, they were all taken care of the cross. They were taken care of the cross, and all what we have to do is to live the life that is pleasing to God. And see, none of us are where we want to be. None of us are where we ought to be. But we are where we are, and we can start there. And that's all, that's all we can do. We can't go back to the past and get somebody corrected that was taking care of the cross. And, and um, we can start right where we are. We can study the book of instruction, which is God's word. Amen. Study it daily. And sometimes, I don't know about you, but I find it sometimes it's hard to understand. So you can read it one time and you put it down, come back later on, Read it again. And the more you read it, the more you begin to understand. But it's not the easiest book to understand. The words are not that easy. But we keep on reading. And then we meditate. And we ask God, what can you know, what does this mean? Lord, what are you saying to me in this in this word, in your word? What are you saying to me? I don't understand it and I don't know what to do. So you got me. You 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 show me what I'm supposed to be doing. And then we can meditate, we can pray, and we can have faith and trust. Because, you know, if you pray and, and you don't have faith, it's kind of like writing a check without your signature on it. Mm. You can't do nothing with it. Mm. So we have, to, we have to think about that. And, and, and you know, it, sometimes you just, you just start off, it looks like, look like you're not up to where you think you ought to be. You say, I would do this. But you know, you, we are all babies in Christ. Mm -hmm. And so, you, you start off with where, where you are. You say, well, I'm going, I'm going to read some each morning. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray at night. And when I go to bed, Jesus is going to be on the line. When I wake up, Jesus is going to be on the line. Mm -hmm. And so, when you get like that, Jesus is with you all on your mind all the time then you want to do what Jesus wants you to do. That's right. And you see, it says, in Psalm it said, delight thyself in the Lord, he gives you desires of your heart. Well, it said, all his ways acknowledge him. But the thing about it is, first of all, you got to delight yourself in the Lord. See, what the Lord wants for you, what you want, may not be the same thing. Mm -hmm. And then, when you want, want, because no matter what, you want to please the Lord. And that's what it's going to take. It's not what I think about you. It's what the Lord know about you. Mm -hmm. You see, we can talk and we can say a lot of things. But if it's not, if we are taught saying one thing and living another thing, we got some problems. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not going to get right until you get it right in your heart. And you say, make up your mind, say, you know, I want to serve the Lord. Amen. I'm going to stop what I'm doing. I know it is wrong, and I should have. Uh, but you, and sometimes you can't do it by yourself, you see. Mm -hmm. But you can make up your mind and want to do it. Mm -hmm. And ask God to help you do it. And so, like I said, we're not where we want to be. But we're starting from where we are. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it just seems like every time you take a step up, there's about two or three back. Mm -hmm. But you keep on walking. You keep on climbing. And after a while, you're going to be up there here. Mm -hmm. and, and so the resurrection has taken care of all those things for us. And that leaves us free to live. Mm -hmm. To live the life that Christ had, had for us. Mm -hmm. But we got to want to do it. Mm -hmm. See, you can't play these games. Because, you know, that was a time when people would come 
and they would have someone to come and speak to you, and they'll be saying all those words, and you don't know what they are. And everything. So when they finish, you really didn't get anything out of it. Mm -hmm. But he, he, he's not asking for anything like that. No, what he wants is a plain, simple life. If you don't know the five words, he wants you to know those. Right. Let one of those five be him. Mm -hmm. But he's saying, he's, he's telling us, you know, be for real. That's the main thing. He said, be for real. If you're a plain old country bump, that's what you are. No big deal. Mm -hmm. If you're a city slipper, that's what you are. Mm -hmm. But whatever you are, you're going to have to you're going to have to deal with God. You see, we're either going to pay on this side or we're going to pay on the other side. Yeah, right. But we're going to pay. Mm -hmm. And he wants us to be for real. And I, yeah, I don't care how good you sing, how good you preach, or how good you teach. If you're not living it, it just ain't worth it. Mm -hmm. And God sees it. Now, sometimes you can hide it from man for years. It's the heart. Right. He knows it. And he wants, he wants, he wants somebody that when we when we meet somebody, they can look at us and say, Oh, they've been with Christ. Mm -hmm. That's what we want. And so, you know, we, we got to we got to acknowledge him first. And say, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. and, and, and all our ways. We got to we got to acknowledge him in all our ways and not lean to our own understanding. Because our understanding sometimes ain't right. Hmm. And sometimes we wrong and don't know the wrong. Mm -hmm. And you know, God can say he he says he can guide us around a whole lot of pitfalls, mm -hmm. everything. Now look how he did the disciples. Then he told them, just throw it on the other side. And they did, and look what happened. Mm -hmm. So he's telling us some of the stuff you're going through, some of the stuff you're suffering with, you know, I could have guided you around it, but you didn't consult me. Mm -hmm. You didn't consult me, and so you know. That's why you had it so hard. Mm -hmm. But he said, I can guide you around to some of the pitfalls in life. And uh, said, um, if you only seek me. And then he said, you seek me first. He said, he said, because some of the things you're struggling with, you can't fix it anyway. You don't know how to fix it. He said, but no matter, you know, as with the disciple, he assured when we least to expect, and he can fix everything. But as believers in Christ, we go through a lot. You know, we need each other. We need the fellowship. Jesus had fellowship with his disciples. He had food. And they were his friends. And, but we, Jesus wants us to be the same way. He wants us to have fellowship. He wants us to um, <clears throat> He wants us to love each other, love being with each other, and work together so that, you know, Things can happen to us that will be to our benefit. Mm -hmm. He can bless us, but he got to have our attention. Mm -hmm. and, and this is one of the, these are some of the things that Jesus said, now look, I want, you know, if you do this, if you come to me, if you show me that you want to do so, I'm with you all the way. Mm -hmm. Are there any comments? Thank God for having you to keep us down. Thank God for And like you were saying, back in the old days, we used to bring food and have them out there on the wire and stuff. All the different people come and join in with we, we call that true love then. But fade away from what? We need to do, and that's I love God for me, and you don't love the one that you with, and you never seen me before. You love God through and by each other. That's right. See, if you love God, you got to love what God does. That's right. And if God loves me, then you don't have a choice. That's right. Put your own to or not. That's right. And you see, like you were saying, there are not many of us. I know the younger ones in our church. Are they would they weren't around when we were having that food on the wire when in the old days we had food fellowship, uh, friends, food and fellowship. Mm -hmm. and many of us not here then. Yeah. Probably about five of us in church was in this church was here at that time. Yeah. So anyway, 
that's the kind of fellowship God wants to have right now. That's right. Because God never changed, but people do. Yeah. And you know, just like when he was, when he first called the disciples to come follow him, yes. and they were, they brought everything they were doing, mm -hmm. and they went to follow Jesus. Yeah. And now, how can how many of us can do that? Because I know, you know, we're living in a different time. I understand that we got to be different. But just like they brought, I mean, they brought everything, just left everything. Mm -hmm. They were heading to Father, the two sons of Zebedee. They just dropped everything. Mm -hmm. But could I ask myself, could, could I do that? Can I just, if you ask me today, you know, to just leave Greenville and go and do what? Could he do it? And say, I got a job for you? You know, first of all, I tell him, you know, Lord, I'm just too old to be home. Huh? And, then I would, and then I would be thinking, you know, this job, do I have benefit? Do I have retirement? How many sick days are there? How many vacation days do I get? Um, <laughs> you know, do I have retirement or do I have to do a four one day? You know, all those things would be you know, but the disciples. And Jesus said to me, and when Peter heard that it was the Lord, Peter took off. He, 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 you know, he could I do that? And we can all ask ourselves, can we do that? Fishes of men. Come on. What would I need? There'd be all kinds of excuses I would have. I know. I know I would. Yeah. I don't know about anybody else, but I know I would have questions. Now, since now he took another one, he told those two men, come on, follow me. And they left their father still sitting in the ship, meaning their neck. Uh -huh. But see, when he's not going to ask you to go nowhere, but he's not going to take care of you. He's going to take care of you. Right. Like he said he would. Yeah. He will, he can do it, and he will do it. Right. But the human side of me would say, you know, that's what I'm talking about. The, we know he's going, if he, he yeah. calls you, he's going to take care of you. But yeah. the human side says, do I, do I go? How much? What is the hourly pay? Is it, is it hourly or is it salary? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we, we all be thinking some sort of way like this. I mean, I have asked myself that when I. Bring the children, bring my children. You have questions. <laughs> and so, you know, we're not going to say Paul Christ said. Didn't let the show out, kind of like on a sad note. Yeah. He told us right to follow him. But now Jesus did. They, they were there. They, they saw him crucified. They yeah. saw him die. Uh, 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 and, and so Jesus, had, Jesus proved to himself a certain point. He came to met Jesus. Jesus tells him to go to Galilee and wait there for him. Uh -huh. and, 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 and you could say, wait for what? I, I hope to go on more than four because they, they were in the city of rest and they were sad for him. So when they go there, you look at the first three verses there, I think the Sunday school there says sin. But sin. And, 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 uh, and, and I have a note here, doing what? Doing what you know. So they went to Galilee. Yeah, and, they and they're just sitting there. Waiting on Jesus to come. Oh, 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 oh. Stuff. And the religion, really how you want to believe it when you beat it. So uh -uh. Uh -uh. What, what could they do now? We just sit there went and do I know so Peter said, I tell you what, we just go back to fish just what we know. And a lot of times in life when God calls us, we he may not he may not be ready for us to go right then and explore that major journey. So that, so what do you do while you wait? Do you still trust in God? And, and and one of the things that is such a challenge for us is wait for God next direction. Wait for God to tell us when to move. You know, God can call you. I, I, I didn't make, I, I, I call you the man who I was called a sinner. But God is saying, wait. So in, in between that, he's saying, wait for the next two years. What am I doing in the next two years? Do I go back doing what I've been doing? No. And so, so, so when Jesus showed up, and, and I don't get up in heaven that day because he said, 
shit in the field. You know, check the fish I heard you allude to. Uh, we don't know why so many fish, or why that the number of fish, but uh, these men are going to be fishing of meat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, so, so Christ has to encourage them when they just had to give up. Well, I, I just go back to fishing. I don't know nothing to do. Uh -huh. But he has been with the, 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 the Christ for three years. He has talked to them. And you see the miracle that he done there, but they had no hope. Uh -huh. They lost the faith. Mm -hmm. And even when the women took the Christ to go there and tear and wait, and God said, for your make instruction. Are we willing to wait to God instruct us? Are we willing to, to take the time to do what God wants to do? Uh, 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 like you had, so many of you said, uh, uh, what we have left behind for the sake of following Christ. And even sometimes, as Mother Lewis said, when she left the country rock and rock, she said, about all what she leaves behind to come here. And sometimes, you don't have to leave home. It, it, a lot of times, when, when God calls you, you may have to even forsake your own family. You're not forsaking your family. But there's a lot of things that you have to leave behind. Yeah. I, I give a good example this morning. Today would have been my wife's birthday. The children wanted to do some things there. So I told them, I said, look, you can't go this morning. Y'all scheduled for this afternoon. Mm -hmm. I had enough service to go to. So sometimes, what, what are we going to do? Mm -hmm. We were waiting for the next move. But I know one thing I find a lot when you follow God directly. Mm -hmm. Be obedient to what God can do. He will bless you. Yeah, and too, while you're waiting, and you you learn to trust, to lean and depend on him. Yes. And you learn to trust him, then no matter how long it takes, you can wait patiently. Mm -hmm. Because you've already got it together with God. You've already, you know, you already learned about him. Now you you you, you know what to do now. Yes. Whatever yes. comes up, you're gonna trust in the Lord. So, so that is that is something that you know it's a lot for us to think about. So all of us probably have a different opinion about what about that person.
I can guarantee y'all not going to enjoy any of it. So, so little y'all just want to keep it out of that casket and go in and enjoy it for yourself because I can't enjoy it. So we, we, have to, we have to look at women and ask ourselves a question. What's important to us? And you, and you, I like the other thing you say that when you lay down at night, if you have God on your mind, when you wake up in the morning, it's easier to have him on your mind. Some of us lay down at night and we think about all of our problems, our privileges, everything that we go through. We think about our worries. Throughout the night, guess what? We toss and turn. We can't find any rest. But when we go to sleep with the Lord on our mind, Well, I just, I have to tell him, Lord, I, you know, I just give it all to him. I can't handle it anyway. I already done messed it up one time. So I just give it to the Lord and let him have it. But if, you, if you're not careful, it'll, the devil will make sure you worry all night long. Make sure you talk and turn. Because he got something, some tool he can use against you. But when Jesus, you got Jesus on your mind. He can't do nothing to God. And if God is keeping you, then he ain't he can't do nothing with you. So this is kind of the way that we, you know, we have to make up our mind that we're going to live for the Lord. All of that stuff that happened, well, like I said before, it, it, it's at the cross. The cross took care of a lot of things. Jesus is not in the tomb anymore. He's alive. So all we have to do is depend on him. Sometimes things happen even in your own home. You don't quite get it. You don't understand why this happened. What am I supposed to learn through all this? You know, why did this happen? It seems like once one thing happens, it's like a domino effect. You just keep going. Up. And then after a while, it starts to get better. But while we're waiting for it to get better, while we're waiting for it to get better, that's that's the key to it. That's the key to it. Have any other comments? Yes, ma'am. I just want to say this. Well, sorry. 
Even I have said myself, this is mine, this is mine. A lot of people said that's mine, that, that thing is mine. But you got, we got to realize we own nothing. We, we don't, the children we got is not ours. We, nothing we got belongs to us. Mm -hmm. Everything we have, it comes from the good master. He just loaned it to mm -hmm. us. For what time he let us stay on the top side of the earth? Mm -hmm. One other comment, one other thing, and then we'll be finished. We we have to realize once we get we get things together, once we we get together, and we got to think about before that I'm concerned. I just need enough to for my days on this earth to eat and you know drive a decent car, <laughs> the house mm -hmm. be happy be. I mean, other than that, what else is there? You know, any day it's something to come by good with all the people. But I'm just saying, I don't don't think about those treasures I used to think about. Them. Now I think about ending up treasures in hell. It don't matter. I just, you know, sometimes you spend money like they ain't going to, you know, like you're on trees and say, what, what did it do? But, <laughs> but I'm just saying, things that used to mean a lot don't mean that much to me anymore. Mm -hmm. My family, my church family, that's what means something to me now. It doesn't make any difference that I don't have a fine car. I just want transportation now. So as you grow in Christ, you have a lot of the things on this earth that used to mean a lot to you. Don't mean that to me now.
just this morning, I posted on Facebook, because others have blessed me, you have been blessed by them. And I said, somebody missed that. And what I mean by that is, because Trustee Nancy have blessed me, she also blessed somebody else to me. And I think a lot of times people don't understand that. When we, when we find out that it ain't about us, um, it's about what we can do for others. You know, that's what counts. Yes, we always say we all mo our, our brothers and sisters keep her. But I look at folks sideways when they say that. Because mm -hmm. I, I, I know um, I have never wanted for anything. Grew up in a house where my family um, always wanted to help folk. Mm -hmm. And my mama told me, she said, uh, boy, you ain't going to never have nothing. Because you're always giving stuff away. But see, I've been blessed with a good job. Get up every morning. All my children are grown. And they're doing some great things. Uh, my dad is 89 years old. Sometimes I wonder. Uh, I'm the one that take care of him. He live by himself and do all he do. He won't stop driving. So no, keep on driving. I said because if you stop, sit down, and go, you'll go to nothing. That's right. So um, I, I wonder sometimes if he gets sick before I do. Which I've always taken off work uh, months at a time. And he had his hip replacement, all that kind of stuff. So, but you know, with that age, you know, other things could come. And you know, I could be worrying about what will happen if I should go, if he should go, if I, if still here and he gets sick. So whatever happened, I'm just gonna have to be prepared, no matter what. Mm -hmm. So that's how I look at that. You know, I look at some people, families are struggling for their family members got old hammers and stuff like that, and it take a toll on them. Yes, but I gotta prepare myself if that should happen. I hope it mm -hmm. don't happen. But I just got to prepare myself. But going back to what um, uh, the pastor said about Mother Wiggs, um, said if she could write. See, here we go again. If we want to be a blessing to somebody, somebody close to her ought to say, sit down and let's talk about it. Let me write it. Mm -hmm. And see, that's why I tell people all the time. I'm always documenting stuff. Tell people all the time, let's sit down. Let's, let me document it. They never do it. So it's on them. They can't sit out and give them the opportunity. Because we have a lot of stuff going to the grave that nobody knows about, and it needs to be documented. So that's why I started documenting stuff years ago. But we got to understand that, you know, you talked about jobs, okay? I get six weeks vacation. Um, um, some people get, <laughs> the people don't even get that kind of vacation, a lot of places. Um, I get five, um, five floating holidays. I get 56 hours of personal time. Um, you know, so I've been blessed. I got 401k. Uh, they cut the pitching out, but I'm still invested. So when people talk to me about a job, I tell them, I said, now this is what, I get paid good money. This is what they got to offer. But if you're looking for someone that got a pension or something like that, then you need to seek other 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 places. But if this is what you want to do, come in. A lot of people can't live off, um, um, I have money coming out of their check for 401k. You gotta have money taken out your check. Most folks, when that money hit, they want all their money. I see people on my job all the time. They go in and change their, um, I forget what you call it, so they don't take no taxes out of the check, especially when they work a lot of overtime. Mm -hmm. they, they go in there, yeah, they go in there, they take it, so they, they get all their money, not knowing they're gonna have to pay it back at the end of the year and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> you know, so, but they don't care, they want it right then. But again, like I say, when we understand that it ain't about us, it's a saying, I forgot who said, you know, it, it was never about me and them, it's about me and him. So when we understand that and be a blessing to other folk, I think that's why I'm, 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 I'm living to, to be 60 years old. Because I have tried to do what's right, try to help people. Um, I, I got a classmate, um, she just retired uh, from school system about a month, about a week ago, and she had to have a hip replacement. So yesterday, I went to Wilson, come back by my house, went to town, took us uh, some food for her, I think her sister lived with her, and you know, people stopped by, so I went on a full course meal for them to eat today. Like I said, she been blessing me, uh, donating to my services. When people donate to my services, I can do stuff like this for the church, I'm not gonna volunteer my time. So when people understand that when you do good for people, I also had posted, when people that have treated me good, I'm going to treat them good. And people, other people, I'm going to treat them accordingly. Now, I ain't going to treat them bad, but I'm going to treat them accordingly, understand that. 
So, I mean, I could go on and on, but I'm just saying these kind of uh, sins, um, um, the messages you preach, the, what the pastor preach, or whomever, if it's good messages, that's what keep me going from week to week. Um, 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 go on a job, and it, you know, I, I, I'm good. You know, I tell people I'm good. I, I, like I said, I knew God been good to me because a lot of people wouldn't even be on. I done got rid of uh, different folk on my job, so I know I'm trying to do what's right. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people would have quit. I, I talk people out of quitting and all that kind of stuff. But that's what I'm saying. I know God been good to me because I, I shouldn't even be on my job, according to <laughs> some folk. But but see, I seen them go. I've been there 36 years. I see. I've had a bunch of plant managers and and supervisors and stuff and 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 everything. So um, that's why I try to live the life I live. And if anything I can do for anybody, and you can even mistreat me, but if you're doing something good, if I disagree with with um, um, Trustee Nancy about something, but she stand up here giving the word, I'm gonna support her. Now, when we go back to that, we don't that we disagree on, then that's another story. We'll deal with that. But then after it's over, we're gonna go back to supporting each other. So that's what people gotta understand, you know. You know, and, and I'm just sick of church folk and other folk that say that they are living that life. That, no, no, no. We know each other. Let's be true to ourselves so we can be true to others. I, I, can't, I look at people sideways. I mean, I'll be listening at church on the way to work, on the way to church this morning. And and I and I know the brother and, and stuff and and stuff you're saying some people for me you have if you've done it publicly you have got to apologize publicly they can respect you thank you. So uh, just just one of the comments. Sometimes you say I treat everybody right. I treat everybody the same. Just I said no, you can treat everybody right. Mm -hmm. but sometimes you can't treat everybody the same. That's right. But what set off one person it wouldn't bother the other person. Mm -hmm. So you have to treat each person according to how they allow you to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are there any other comments? Thank you for that great lesson. If not, this concludes our Sunday school meeting. And Pastor tells Mother Wade she wants to do it on video. I come down there video. <laughs>